to your satisfaction. What has happened? Your brother. What's he done this time? <laughs> the newspapers are all over Tupany's murder. And if that weren't enough, someone has stolen the currency printing plates. Was that also Jacob's doing? I doubt it. Now, no one trusts the bank or England's currency. There, there will be inflation, riots, manufacturing will jump to America for the cheap labor. In short, Britain is done for. Jacob, you've really put your foot in it now. What if I smuggle the plates back into the bank? Well, huh? certainly help. Better yet, it would call into question the stories on Tupany's murder, which would restore confidence in the economy. That's settled then. Britain lives to see another day. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, would you mind destroying any counterfeit notes you come across so they don't circulate? Of course. It really is very good of you to help. Follow me. The counterfeit money is being spent nearby. Well, if you can call it counterfeit, with those printing plates, it's nearly impossible to tell the real notes from the fake ones. Mr. Abelay. If this gets out... Well, I've said this already. When people don't trust their currency, and we're already seeing riots... Mr. Aberline. You two, follow me. I don't wish to be robbed on my way to the cart. The counterfeiters. Heard about the rioting at the bank? They can riot all they like. We won't be giving back those plates. What difference does it make? It's not like he has any real cash on him. Since we've got the printing plates, it's all real cash. Did you hear those crowds? Sounds like all of London is rioting. Nothing to do with us. I can't believe Jacob's managed to shatter the entire economy. Father was right. He acts in haste and repents not at all. There you are. Easy. Please don't set yourself. Keep your eyes open. 
anyone could be trying to get in. Yes, sir. Keep this place locked down. Yes, sir. Guard this place as you would the Bank of England itself. Absolutely, sir. to sneak these back into the bank. Intruder! She's right there! To me. You have a lot to answer. I said stay back. No one gets you in. You have a lot to answer for. This could be rather useful. I want you to tell me if this money's real or not. Come on, then. Something must be done. You all should be ashamed. This is an outrage. Bankers, that should be rhyming slang, mate. You absolute bunch of bankers, as in wankers! I shall not leave without my pound, my shillings, and my pence, sir! I've read the papers. This will be the ruin of us! You have a lot to answer for! This will not end well for anyone. I got all my money compared to gold!
There. As if they were never taken. Well, the London papers are running the story of how it was all a hoax. No more riots. Faith in the bank restored. Finally, I might get a quiet night on patrol. Miss Fry, I can't thank you enough. Glad we've averted catastrophe, Sergeant. Although it's Jacob who should be thanking me. Tell me again where we are going. I found a letter from the Prince Consort among Lusitan's research, marked with the same insignia as your key, dated 1847. 1847. The same year the Prince began renovations to Buckingham Palace. You think he added a vault for the Shroud? And since there is no map of the palace with the room marked Secret Vault. Your Highness, may I present Miss Evie Fry. Miss Fry, Maharaja Dulip Singh. A pleasure, Your Highness. My friend, the plans you asked for have been removed. Removed? By whom? Crawford Starrick. 
or someone employed by him. Yes, I thought you might recognize the name. I know where they are, but it is heavily guarded. That part will not be a problem. I thought not. We're going to need a plan. I can provide a distraction for the guards while you find a safe way inside. Oh, really? <laughs> for you, Evie? Certainly. Well, once I'm inside, I'll find someone who knows where the papers are stored. And we will meet back on the train. Be careful. It's not them. No. Nothing here. Looks like I have to ask someone where the plans are.
I swear, miss. Oh, I don't know where they've taken him. Taken who? The man. Dressed like you. The guards dragged him off. Henry, the plans you stole, where are they? I don't know anything about that. The plans. The mission. You're some of Clara's children. They took Mr. Henry. We couldn't stop them. I bit one of them good, though. They dragged him off in a red carriage. They won't get far, though. One wheel looked like it was about ready to fall off. You can see the cart tracks. It looks so wobbly-like. run off the road. They must be driving quickly. That's it. Property. I must be on the right track. That must be the carriage. Found you. Now to find Henry. them dragging someone out of the carriage after the wheel fell off they said he'd hit his head not sure why they needed to take him to the church but that's where they went
Send someone to move the architectural plans. Do you have them? Do they hurt you? I'm fine. Let's go. What about the plans? The plans are lost! Oh. Evie, I'm sorry! Just concentrate on escaping, please.
All right, B. Who are you and what's your game? And so the Russians thought they had us cut off. Unless a commander would have thrown his hands up and surrendered. Well, if it isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the back? I am an exceptional commander. The, the corrupt practices go. bill is a vital Wasn't step in reforming our government. A, a if the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call ourselves free, sir. This is so like you, Gladstone. You would rather throw your body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. Bye. God, Disraeli, you are a fool! I'll not stand idly by and watch you drag parliamentary privilege through the muck! No, certainly not! You'd rather return us to the yoke of tyranny? Perhaps while we're at it, Mr. Gladstone, we could repeal Magna Carta and return the crown to the bloody stirrups! How dare you, sir! Merely because I do not wish to see government placed in the hands of judges, you would... Make these slanderous accusations? I'll not stand for it! Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. B, I presume. Pleasure to meet you. B. B. My name's Herbert. And why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just a job, sir. Some old bloke paid me. To... Smug bastard.
come from? Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lads are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Perfect. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So much for the house call. I have to find a way into that carriage. are you? Prime Minister, I'm your new bodyguard, Jacob Fry. I wasn't informed of any new bodyguard. Who's your commanding officer? Let the boy speak, Dizzy. <laughs> Madam, apologies. But we've learned of a threat on your life. And the Met thought it best to move quickly. Threat? What sort of threat? <gasps> that sort. If you excuse me a moment. First, Your Excellency. about Gladstone, young man. I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. You seem like a rough-and-ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day!
Madam? Mr. Fry? Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I'm afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. <laughs> I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. That's yours, if you can get those chaps over there to follow me. Right you are, sir. Best lead them astray before they turn me to shreds. to deal with the liberals. Now, a drive is in order, I think. <laughs> Doing fine, girl. Devil's Acre has to offer. Oh, my God. 
Is your dog quite all right? Oh, Desmond's fine. He's just not over fond of strangers. Straight away. Or cats. God's oh. sake. Someone gets top before my very eyes and I'll go and turn my head. Bloody belief. Do you know this gentleman is a oh, what was it? Yes. A costermonger of all things. Remarkable how the working classes occupy themselves, isn't it? Very industrious, I'm sure. Shall we go? And you're the terror of London's underworld. <sighs> now let us continue. Everything all right? Oh, yes. I've just learned to whistle. Right. Those two. Uh, yes, they uh, they seem to be. Um... I've been married twice, Mr. Fry. I'm fully aware of what they're doing. God bless them. What is that man selling? Best not to ask. Why? Is it something dreadful? <gasps> is it rat? I don't mean to be indelicate, given the present company, but another name for it is Bow Wow Mutton. Here we are, the old one ton. Mm. So, this is a pint, is it? Huh? <sighs> Remarkable. Nice doggy. Change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I have just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Hmm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. 
Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> Well, well. If it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, let's not do something we'll regret. Your stop, madam. My stop? <laughs> How delightful. Uh, thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> oh, yes. Mm. 